All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Hey, all you crazy sci-fi and fantasy fans. It's time for your daily dose of shenanigans over here at the Blasters and Blades podcast. Just three nerdy veterans geeking out over our science fiction passions and fantastical fantasies. A place where magic is king, the sky is the limit, and space is the place. So without further ado, you can hear I'm working on my docent voice. I used to do that uh, as a volunteer at the historic parks and you know, they might eventually open those back up. So I got to keep in practice, you know? Oh, I scared him off. Well, you're waiting for me. You're talking to the audience there. I'm waiting for the audience to respond. Oh, well, the audience is listening after we record it. So this was for you. I'm saying I'm working on my, uh, my docent voice so I can give well, you know, his as far talk. as I know, this is, as far as I know, this is true. You know, there's, yeah. there's nothing, you know, odd about it. You were just telling the truth. That's the way it is. <laughs> No comment. I, I, I was even, Although I think if you're trying to go for the um, for the but wait, there's more voice. You know, you get a little bit more work to do. Yeah, I know it's it's you got to sound both enthusiastic but low key so you don't upset the babies. And we're walking, we're walking, we're stopped, and you got to coordinate that with the hand gestures and do it walking I my, backwards. I don't think my hand gestures would work very well for group settings. You know, with kids. Yeah, the, well, the the last official docent job I had was at the Valley Forge National Historic park and i got fired by congress so there's that you know they specifically fired you by name and that has to say something they did there was even a congressional inquiry i'm sure if you go freedom of information act you could probably still find how J.R. hanley was reported to congress so i was given a tour of the uh the establishment on on the valley forge site where george washington stayed that winter with martha washington his wife and uh, and so I'm giving the tour and I'm pointing out that everything that's not historic, uh, it was exactly what was in the house, is period historic and very few reproductions. And, uh, you know, because we had the, such a extensive list from from that they did of inventory, Washington was very particular about that. And I said, you know, with the exception of the the main walkway, everything is period because obviously that gets worn out and they got to replace the floorboards. And someone's like, yeah, I know. And I'm like, oh, how'd you know? Because they they used nails. They didn't have nails back then. I'm like, what? They glued Jesus to the cross? And apparently he was offended. Ah, well, but I, I, I had that moment where my filter didn't engage quick enough. Yep, that <sighs> explains everything. And I was literally my last week on the job when the congressional aide showed up. He was like, it's a congressional inquiry. We have to do this. Can we talk to you, Mr. Hanley? So I told him what happened. He started laughing. He's like... Would it since you're leaving anyway, your internship's up in a, in a week. Can I just tell them they got we fired you because of this? I'm like, absolutely, you fired me. I feel fired. <laughs> I don't know why that amuses me so much. We're probably boring everyone. So instead, I we're talking to the one, the only, the legendary science fiction guru, Terry Mixon. So, Terry, can you introduce yourself to the audience? I'm not sure I need an introduction after that. I mean, you, you, all that glowing praise. I don't know. Um, I mean, I'm Terry Mixon. Obviously, after that introduction, you know who I am. But I'm the author of the Empire of Bones saga and the Imperial Marine saga and any number of other little books here and there. So he, he does have the misfortune of being one of the few authors who is wrong about who the main character in his book series is. Because he'll, he'll have you believe it's Kelsey in the Empire of Bones series, but we all know it's Jared. He's the man of the hour. You just keep thinking that, buddy. <laughs> so the uh the second part of that introduction dear listeners how we first found them so uh, i actually first found terry through his listeners of the dead robot society podcast that he co-hosts with paulie cooley and a few other people along the way and i said if i'm gonna listen to this guy give writing advice let me see what he's written so i can see if he knows what the heck he's talking about and like crack that first empire of bones series it just the first book hooked me and you know who the main character was when you opened that book hmm jared just saying, putting that out there. I will point out that when I start writing these books, I don't know who the main character is going to be. That's what develops over time. Fair enough. So uh, since this is the Blasters and Blades podcast, we can't let you escape without another round of the religion questions. So Planet of the Apes, 2001 A Space Odyssey, or Mars Attacks? Definitely Mars Attacks. Ack, 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 ack. We had an anthology we put together with a cover inspired by that movie. Uh, it's 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 yeah it's up there with one of my favorites and because we're polytheistic because seska is all about the fantasy side of things excalibur legend or willow i gotta tell you that excalibur is immediately ruled out because when i was in the army my roommate when i lived off post 
watch that movie literally three times a week. I could quote the dialogue all the way through without any problem by the time I, I mustered out of the service. Wow. Yeah, that would do it for me too. So, so what were the other two choices? Uh, Legend or Willow. Ooh, tough call. We'll go with Willow. Good movie. They should make another one. It was good. I, I actually heard do, that they were going to make another one. Oh, uh, they would have to take it as the from the baby's point of view because that gives them time to age everybody out. Who knows what they're going to do? They Movies these days, they don't go make new content. They just go, oh, let's look back what was, what was popular 30, 40 years ago. We'll just do that again. Yeah, the nostalgia kick. All right, so let me introduce the episode to you today, dear listener. If you notice, Terry's not on the screen. He broke his camera. It's okay. I did too. But uh, today we're going to be doing a, a brief episode where we dive into the world of anthologies and short stories. Uh, so we're going to interview authors about their uh, contribution to the undervalued world of short and serial content. This time we're, we're going to look at the Expanding Universe 7 anthology. So let me read the uh, what the anthology is all about. <clears throat> so this is my attempt at a movie trailer voice. Please don't throw tomatoes. Your screens will break. It'll be ugly. You'll get really mad at me. And I won't even be there for you to for you to egg it'll just it'll get ugly all right but <clears throat> explore the universe two possibilities exist either we are alone in the universe or we are not both are equally terrifying author c arthur c clark penned those words and they stand true to this day do we want to be alone leave it to science fiction authors to address that question in equal measure aliens can be peaceful or not who will emerge as the superior strain of intelligence humanity may be new to the game but they aren't new to conflict. Fantastic races vying for dominance, a microcosm of the greater good. Battles fought for the higher ideals, battles fought just to survive. War doesn't care about human or alien. The soldiers fight and they fight hard as if their very lives depended on it because they do. Dun, dun, dun. Right, you really so need to nice. keep working on that voice. Or, you know, write more books. So I have a day job. <laughs> All right, Terry. What was your short story in this anthology called? It was called Anti-Piracy Patrol. All right. Well, I write that down because not all the authors remember, but you did. So, so points to you. Although it does help that you literally just finished this one. Uh, so what's the basic synopsis of this story? The basic synopsis is I took the adult characters from the first book of the uh, Imperial Marine Saga and went ahead and, and made a prequel short story of them out on patrol and stumbling across what they believe is piracy and how they dealt with it. Outstanding. And I'll have you know, I bought this anthology just because it had Imperial Marines in it. And the other stories might be amazeballs, but I haven't even looked at them. I just saw your name because you sent it in your newsletter and I'm like, bye. Um, so don't spend your 33 cents all in one place. Gosh, you think I'm getting get 33 copy. cents out of this? Wow, what do you think this is, Amazon Vela? I I, <laughs> I didn't even check. Uh, I'm used to anthologies always putting themselves out there at 99 cents, which means uh, Amazon pays the publisher 33. But I didn't even look what I paid. Uh, 3.99 <laughs> is what you paid. It's going to go up to 4.99 soon. You All overspent, right. pal. No, you didn't. You didn't overspend. Uh, and if it goes up to 3.99, maybe you actually do get 33 cents a sale with all the authors involved. No, I don't know. This was a this was a flat payment up front. Well, there you go. So what was the inspiration for this short story? The inspiration for this short story was Craig Martell saying, I need a short story for this. Oh, okay. That was it. That's okay. not the answer Somebody's... you were expecting, was it? <laughs> no, I mean I was like, I was walking and contemplating the meaning of life, and then it just hit dude, me. What would dude, I do? I if am I, the, I am a working man's author. If, if I get a short stories prompt, I will go ahead and say, okay, I got to write a short story. Let's see what I want to talk about. Oh, how about I do this thing? So I think about it when I have to write it. I don't, I don't do this meta thing of putting my hand on my forehead and going, what will my muse tell me to do next? So your muse is the mortgage company saying we want money. That's exactly right. All right. So uh, you've already said that this um, you, story fits into a larger universe in your when you're talking about the story. So for people who don't know about the Imperial Marines universe, can you give us the Reader's Digest version? It is. Uh, the universe is the story of a young girl that is not part of the Empire that belongs to their enemy, who is a, basically a genetically engineered being. And it's her story growing up and becoming an Imperial Marine of her own uh, because they rescued her. And 
this story is about her guardian and, well, her other guardian, her two guardians, and what they were doing before they went to rescue her from the singularity. So when you wrote the uh, the first book, so the Imperial Marine Saga, and we've, we've, we'll pull out of the archives and re-air it, the interview we did as Sci-Fi Shenanigans about the Empire of Bones universe. When you wrote that and you wrote the scene where the character is an adult and you show her in the in the hollow vid, did you know at the time that you were going to make a series about her or did it just sort of happen that way? I did not know, but I, I'm one of those writers that I tend to pepper a lot of different things that can be used as story hooks. And then when I need one, I go back and I go, what have I done? Oh, hey, this thing here, that's pretty interesting. I will admit that when I wrote that scene, I had in mind writing a prequel series, but I didn't necessarily know that she was going to be the character. I had an I had an inkling that she might be, but until you start writing, you don't really know. Okay, fair enough. Um, so do you have to be intimately familiar with the Empire of Bones universe, which I largely call both series because I think of them in the same universe. Do you have to be familiar with that universe to enjoy this short story? Not at all. It's, it is entirely self-sufficient. Okay. And um, what subgenre of science fiction would you consider this story? Cause I know your main series are both mill SF and space opera and a few others sprinkled in. This is mill SF. It's short story. You, you don't have a lot of time to deal with lots of different things. So this is dealing with the the combat elements. It's definitely Mill SF. What about the rest of the collection? So the rest of the Expanding Universe Volume 7. Uh, is I haven't read all the stories either. This may be a shock to you, but I suspect that most of them are military science fiction. Okay. Um, so what is it about the military science fiction subgenre um, that appeals to you? I like the stakes. You, you've got, like you said earlier, humans, when you were reading the um, blurb for the back of this, you've got humans out in the greater universe fighting for their very survival. That's military yes. SF right there. That's, that's it in a nutshell. So do you remember your first Mill SF book that you read? Hammer Slammers. Ooh, okay. That's on my to-be-read list. I'm uh, going to have to look for that with my Audible credit at the end of the month. I definitely uh, recommend it. It's it's definitely older fiction, but it's like the father of military science fiction. I always thought that that was uh, either Starship Troopers or Weber. Well, Starship Troopers is is definitely Mill SF, but it's not exactly in the same vein as uh, what what Pornell did with Hammer Slammers. Was it Pornell or was it Niven? I think it was Pornell. Okay. Did you? Now you're, uh, gonna make, it? now you're gonna make me look it up because now I can't remember which author it is. <laughs> did you read it or did you listen to it on audiobook? Because I know you're as. I read as, it as a kid, like forty years ago. Okay, so that's the one thing I've had because right now my my reading time is almost exclusively when I walk, so it's all audio. And uh, some of the older books, like when they put them to um, to audiobook, they made no effort to modernize it, so it's really scratchy and it's just. It's garbage. Like somebody took an eight track and tried to copy it over through a tape deck. It is not Pornell or Niven. It is David Drake. So shoot me for okay. that. But this is a, it's a 1979 collection of military science fiction short stories that I picked up when it came out back in 79 or 80. So it's been a while to, since I've read it. I have to make time to read it then because chances are the audiobook is not going to be up to par then. Okay. Um, well, uh, we've got one last because we promised these short interviews about short fiction. So we've got one more question on the uh, for the road for you, Terry. So you've created this Empire of Bones universe. Uh, if you could live in that world, would you? Sure. Who wouldn't? Uh, anybody that's on the receiving end of the bad stuff you do to all your characters? I only do the bad stuff to you. Uh, I seem to remember Paul Cooley lost his legs and part of his man bits and a few other people died along the way. Ah. Uh. Just casualties, you know, incidentals. I mean, I guess he could get robotic prosthetics. That's right, with, with a pneumatic fitting. <laughs> His poor wife. All right, so can you tell us how they can find you? You can find all of my stories on Amazon. I'm the Terry Mixon writing science fiction. You can find me at terrymixon.com. Other than that, I'm sure the links, more links will be in the, in the end notes, but that's where you'll primarily find me other than Facebook. I'm very chatty on Facebook. 
He is. And if you uh, if you like his podcast, it's the Listeners of the Dead Robot Society. It's all about writing science fiction and fantasy. So if you if you like to scribble the words, even if you're not a professional, uh, his podcast is geared towards just anyone that loves the craft and not necessarily people that are trying to make a living at it. Mm -hmm. so, Episode 600. We're recording it this weekend. And it's it's a very um, lively community over on Discord and on uh, Facebook. So, all right. You can find us on our website at anchor.fm backslash blasters tech and tech blades. Anchor.fm backslash blasters tech and tech blades. You can follow us on Twitter at SF underscore fantasy underscore show. Sierra Foxtrot underscore fantasy underscore show. You can email us at blasters and blades podcast at gmail.com. Again, blasters and blades podcast at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook where all the shenanigans happen over at facebook.com backslash groups backslash blasters and blades podcast. And finally, you can support the show over at buymeacoffee.com backslash author J.R. Hanley. Again, buymeacoffee.com backslash author J.R. Hanley for a one-time donation. That works great if you want to make something reoccurring. Uh, Anchor.fm backslash blasters tech and tech blades gives you that option. But either way, we appreciate all of your support that helps us keep the light on. And uh, I will uh, use any excess money to keep Doc Seska and Nick Garber duly intoxicated. They will drink until their livers surrender. Uh, and if they were here, they would tell you they're not the quitting types. But uh, that, that's a wrap for today. So thank you for spending some of your precious time with us. For Nick Garber and Doc Seska, I am J.R. Hanley, and this was the Blasters and Blades podcast. We'll be back next week at the same time where we'll indulge our love of nerd culture, cheesy jokes, and all things that go boom. <laughs>